Now I just want to show you a quick trick for doing scientific notation that's a little bit quicker than kind of the method I showed before. So the trick is this. Um, we are going to look at two things. We're going to look at what way the uh, decimal needs to move, and we're going to look at what way the um, exponent needs to move. Okay, and by the decimal I mean literally the decimal point, and by exponent I mean the exponent above the power of 10. So what happens is that these always move opposite of each other. Okay, so this is just kind of a trick for doing, uh, converting into scientific notation quicker. So let's take a look at our original number here, 3600. Now, if we want this to be in scientific notation, we know we need the decimal place right there. Currently, it's right there, even though we don't really realize it. We never write that, and we uh, most of the time don't write that, but there is actually a decimal place there, because I could write 0, .0, and that would be the same thing. So, we've got a decimal place there, we need it to get there. Okay? Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in power of 10 notation. So I'm going to say, hey, really, we've got this as times 10 to the 0. Okay? And in fact, I'm going to write that in red, because that's something I'm adding to the original number. So we've got times 10 to the 0. So here's what needs to happen. We need to go from here three places to the left. Okay? So our decimal, in this case, is moving to the left. Hopefully you can see that at the top of the screen. So our decimal is moving left. That means our exponent needs to move right on the number line. Well, if you remember your number line, we've got 0 here, here's 1, 2, 3, here's negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Well, if I'm currently sitting at 0, moving 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, okay? So my decimal place moves left, therefore my exponent moves right. So I end up with 3.6. Remember, we typically drop the zeros. Again, we'll talk more about it later. Um, and then we have times 10, and now since we move 3 to the right, we have times 10 to the third. And if you remember, that's the same number that we got by going through the entire process of writing out, oh, it's the same as 360 times 10, etc. Okay? Other example. Now, we know that we need, we have a decimal place right here. We need it to be, oh, it was actually 0 0.0023, I believe. Okay? We need that decimal place to be right there. Okay? So our decimal needs to move three places to the right. Therefore, and by the way, remember, we can take any number and write it originally as long as it's a number by itself, times 10 to the 0, because that just equals 1. Okay? We move our decimal place three places to the right. That means our exponent needs to go 3 to the left. Since we're at 10 to the 0 to begin with, now we're at 10 to the negative third. So we could write this as 2.3 times 10 to the negative third. Okay? This is a little trick that I find for some students who have trouble remembering which way you need to go. Just a little easier way to concretely know, hey, the decimal moves this way, so the exponent needs to get smaller or bigger correspondingly. So we're going to take a couple examples. Um, this will be the first. We're going to look at this really small number and look at how to convert it into scientific notation. The first way I'm going to look at it is just make sure it makes sense looking at it from the multiplying or dividing by 10 method. And then from there, uh, I'll show you the shortcut. So remembering that we want our decimal point to end up one digit, then decimal point, then the rest of our digits. I'm going to take this number and I'm going to rewrite it, um, getting closer to there as 0 0.000107. But I only have three zeros, you, you see. In order for this to be the same as that, I actually have to divide it by 10. Now, this number is the same as that number. They're equal. Okay? Likewise, I could write this number as 0 0.00107 divided by 10 twice. Now, if you check on your calculator, if you take this and you divide by 10 and you divide by 10 again, you will end up with this number. Okay? Likewise, I could go on. Now, if you'll notice, I have to go one, two, three more times. Three more divides by uh, three more times dividing by 10. So I would end up with 1.07 divided by 10, divided by 10, divided by 10, divided by 10, divided by 10. Well, really that's just dividing by 10 five times. Well, if you recall from the previous video, dividing by 10 is the same as using a negative exponent. So I can write times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, now I'm in scientific notation. One digit, decimal place, rest of our digits, power of 10. This one is negative because we have a very small number. You always want to make sure that it makes sense. Meaning, if I had 
and this is the most common mistake that's made in these types of problems, if I had written 1.07 times 10 to the fifth by accident, that is obviously not correct because if I multiply by 10 five times, I'm going to get this really big number, 10700, something like that. Well, that's really big and this is really small, so that doesn't make any sense. So you want to make sure that your end result actually makes sense. Okay, this is something that I'm adding on top of what we did in the last video. So this makes sense, it's a small number, it looks like it's the same as that one. Okay, from here on out, I'm just going to use the trick that I taught you in the previous video that makes it a little quicker to do this process. So now, let's do a different example. Let's do a really big number. Let's take 2861000. We're going to take that, we're going to convert it into scientific notation. Now, we're going to do two things to be able to do that. We're going to add a little decimal point here, and we're going to add the fact that I can write this as times 10 to the 0. This is still the same number. That decimal place is there, it's just implied when we write it normally. This, well, 10 to the 0 is equal to 1. So I'm multiplying by 1, I'm not changing the number at all. All this does is gives us somewhere to start as we do our conversion into scientific notation. So this number, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how the decimal moves and in comparison how the exponent moves. So if you remember from the previous video, these two are going to move in opposite directions. The exponent moves via the number line. There's six, there's three. There's negative three and negative six. So we need to have digit, decimal, rest of our digits. So that means we're gonna to need to end up as 2.861. We don't always drop zeros, but for our purposes right now, we're just gonna always drop those last zeros um, so that they're not all there as decimal points after, or as zeros after this decimal point. To get here, this decimal place had to move, I believe, six places to the left. That moves six places to the left, therefore our power of 10 needs to move six places to the right on the number line. Well, six places from zero puts us at six, meaning this must be times 10 to the sixth, and that's our answer. That's all there is to it, okay? Decimal point and power of 10 move in opposite directions. Now that said, you always want to check your answer, make sure it makes sense. If I multiply this by 10 six times, I'm going to end up with a big number. This is a big number. That makes sense, okay? It's easy to check because if you ended up with 2.861 times 10 to the negative 6, well that means take this and let's divide it a bunch of times by 10. Well then I'm going to end up with a really small number. If I have a really small number, that doesn't fit with this, the really big number that we started with. So you always want to make sure that your answers are reasonable in that way. Last example we're going to do is one that is already written in power of 10 notation. So let's say take something like 387 times 10 to the fourth. Okay? And we want to get that into scientific notation. Once again, remember that your decimal point and your exponent move in opposite directions. There's an implied decimal point right there. Okay? Then we know that we want the decimal place to be between the first digit and the rest of the digits. So I want to have 3.87. Okay? Well, I need to move two places to the left. On the number line. So I'm at 4. Now, most people can kind of look at this and go, oh, I'm moving two decimal places. That means this is going to shift either to 6 or to 2 either up two or down two, because my decimal place moved two. Well, the question usually is, which way? Again, my answer is, if your decimal place moved to the left, then you move to the right on the number line, from four to six. So 3.87 times 10 to the sixth. Again, it's relatively easy to double check your answer here. This is a fairly large number, 387 times 10 to the fourth. Well, I'm just multiplying by 10 four times. This is also a fairly large number. I'm multiplying a little bit smaller number than this, but I'm multiplying it by more times, more times by 10. On the contrary, let's say I ended up with 3.87 times 10 to the second. Well, that's clearly a pretty small number. In fact, it's 387. Whereas this is 387 with four zeros on it. Three million or so, four million almost. So clearly when we check for reasonableness, we, sh we can show that this is in fact the correct answer, such that since our decimal place moves to the left, 
our exponent moves to the right.